third turn. <laughs> Seeing the presence of a quorum of crazy people, I am going to call the meeting of the uh, Governance Organization and Legislation Committee to order at 9.31 a.m. And pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 and 107, of the Acts of 2022 and extended by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be held via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Member, okay. Members of the public can access the meeting via Zoom or by telephone. Good morning, everyone. So uh, what I'm going to look at is... Uh, first, please call the roll and announce audio oh. and video recording, if you didn't. This meeting is being recorded, <laughs> whether I like it or not. <laughs> and to make sure everyone can see and be heard, I'm going to call the roll. Councillor Griesmer? Present. Councillor Haneke? Present. And Councillor DeAngelis is present. Councillor Taub may be joining us in about a half an hour. Uh, Councillor Miller will not be here today. Uh, so I'm looking over the agenda. There's a lot more material in it than we're going to get to today, and that's fine. Um, but it looks like we can look at the uh, proposed rental registration by law. Uh, and regulations for clarity, consistency, and actionability. We're going to be carrying over the uh, Af um, Amherst Black Reparations Committee charge. Uh, town manager goals, we should look at that and try to get a final draft. Uh, and we have a carryover discussion. We also have minutes from November 8th's meeting. So I'd like at this point to... Um, see if there's if uh, people will accept the minutes as written. I move that we accept the, the November 8th minutes as written. Is there a second? Second. Okay, and I'll call the roll. Griesmer? Aye. Haneke? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, that's done. Um, the other thing that's happening is uh, Finance Committee, um, and I we can talk about this briefly. Bob Hegner has become a counselor, so he will not be a non-voting resident member if he's on finance. The other thing is Bernie's term is ending. Um, so there's going to be two vacancies. Um, so what I'm trying to do is figure out whether we should start now by posting um, and posting the you know the positions on the town bulletin board or anything like that, or should we wait until January? When does Bernie's term end? The twenty uh, the beginning yeah. of twenty twenty four, I but think. June. So oh, it's June. Okay, yeah. never mind. I'm Bob, sorry. Bob, I think Bob has to formally resign or submit his notice before we quote have an impending vacancy, even if we know it's happening. Okay, so, so we can disregard that for now and get yeah, it right. up in but, January. But let's now let's go ahead and ask, should we start advertising so that as soon as the finance committee is formed in January, they can look at a it's GOL. GOL is formed in January. Right. That's but right. GOL could cannot advertise until there's an, an impending vacancy and that needs a letter of resignation from someone to create the impending vacancy. Okay. okay, so what I can do is contact Bob and ask him to resign. Or ask him if he plans on resigning. Oh. And, 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 and it would be effective January 1st. And if he plans on resigning, if he submits it earlier with an effective date of before he becomes a counselor, we could then advertise the position to start that 14 day time clock so that whatever GOL is in existence in January can move straight to other things. Right. But the other thing I just want to mention, I 
you know, I certainly don't want to start the advertisement of it two week a week over the two weeks of Christmas and New Year's. So if we're going to advertise it, we should try to do it as soon as we can and make sure that it's open other than when people aren't paying attention. Okay. Okay, well, I'll contact uh, Bob and uh, we can go from there. Uh, so I guess we can get started. Um, but I'm wait for Jennifer. I, uh, I think she'll have more input on the uh, town manager goal. So I'd like to start with the proposed rental registration bylaw and regulations. So can you pull that up, Athena? Bylaw or regulations? Bylaw first and then regs. And knowing your efficiency, Mandy, you've probably gone through these already, but. Well, I read the comments. Yeah. I haven't thought about necessarily the changes that might need to be made because it's a committee decision on what. Well, if how. the committee can't make them. Because... Yes. If they're clarity and consistency, this committee can. Okay. All right. Bossy, bossy woman. Okay. Um, I think you can scroll down to the first. Well, I've seen this res residential bylaw so much in CRC that I'm, uh, Lynn, do you need to be uh, going through or can we get to the first con uh, of I'm, John Murray's I'm going to trust you, but really look forward to the fact that the two of you are intimately familiar with it. Okay. So the first, the first comment is a continuing as, as, it sort of implies um, continuing comment. And we've changed the language, CRC changed the language multiple times. Um, the goal here from CRC's point of view is to ensure, and, and at the request of the building commissioner and building inspector, um, to ensure that if there is a problem where they need someone on site to access the building without, you know, breaking the door down or, um, to deal with tenants that have been misplaced um, or or displaced uh, because of like a fire or something that they they have someone accessible and able to show up within a certain amount of time um, to do meetings like that and things. So that that was the goal of this language. It used to be the current bylaw I think says fifty miles. Um, 25 miles, I could look up what the current bylaw says. Um, but as you can see, what the attorney says is um, maybe instead of specific locations, timely manner or something like that. Yeah. And Athena, can you make this a tad larger? I'm having a hard time seeing it, but, um, and I don't have a paper copy with me. Thank you. That's, thank you very much. Um, I think that it's reasonable to just change it and be able to act on the owner's behalf in a timely manner. Um, do we really, I mean, if there's a fire, I can't imagine that the person in charge wouldn't react and respond um, unless they were out of the country or something. But um, what do you think, Mandy? So in other words, we would end it with property. Um, no, on behalf of... Oh with regard to the property in a timely right, right. manner. Right. I'm As sorry, but we would get rid of it. Yeah. And, and, the, and if someone questions a change at GOL, it would be for actionability in a sense, right? Um, right. Mm -hmm. right. Jonathan citing a potential legal issue with the language. Right. So I think we can go right on to the next comment if people are comfortable with that. Yeah, please. So C, the, the anything in blue is also Jonathan's. And that, yeah, the, that addition is, I think, a result of the letter. Yes, it is. Yeah, and I think that's fine. As an actionability issue. Mm -hmm. See, I saw the letter as very much part of, you know, yeah. legal 
actionability, et cetera. And this addition pertains to that. Yeah, right. So the next comment, as as Thena types this, relates to look at short-term definition up here, number 19, that was just posed that says 31 or fewer consecutive days, and then exemptions that say residential rental property rented less than 14 days cumulative in a calendar year. So the use of the word short-term rental appears in the application part of this. And this is where we haven't spoken to Jonathan. So I he, he flagged something um, that I don't think is actually in conflict. He's just not clear as to the difference in those two items. So we define short-term to include that anyone who rents this property, rents property on a short-term basis, i.e. Airbnbs, mm -hmm. um, re is required to obtain a permit. That will show up somewhere in, um, you know, residential, you know, all dwellings, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and then within that, um, you have to, if, if you're a short-term rental, you have to prove a couple of different other things in your application and provide a couple of other things, including that you comply with state law um, on tax remittance and, and stuff. Um, the exemption where you do not have to obtain a permit is meant to say, yes, if you rent on a short-term basis, on an Airbnb basis, but you do so less than 14 days in an entire year, you don't have to obtain the permit. So basically you, you've you used the, um, I guess it's the tax cutoff is the 14 days? Um, no, we the CRC thought of that as if you're doing it for more than 14 days a year, you're truly operating some sort of business type thing. Yeah, okay. Um, Versus if it's one weekend a year, you're not really operating it as a business. Right. That 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 was the that that was CRC's thinking in terms of the 14 days. So he he indicates um you know what constitutes short term and what specific uses are are you know um I I don't think there's so it might be a clarity issue. I'm not sure CRC ever figured out how to clear up the clarity other than removing the use of the word short term under exemptions. In E. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about the possibility of here? Um, something about residential rental properties rented on a short term basis, less than 14 days cumulative in the calendar year. You do that, but it feels clunky and I it, it feels really clunky, but I understand he's trying to he's trying to meld short term with the issue that one is 31 days and one is 14. Right. He yeah. sees a conflict there, but I'm not sure there is one. He sees the clarity. Yeah. Because, right? yeah. Yeah. But other than about, Okay, I'm just trying to what about other than the definition of short term it is that that term is used in F1D whether the property in, in the application you have to deter, you have to disclose whether the property will be rented for short term rentals um and then provide the following information um and then in uh, Okay. okay, the tenant information sheet references short term, and then th those are the only two places it is. Um, for tenant information sheet, it's where you display the information sheet. Um, so why don't we, in this one, just say in the beginning of the sentence, short term residential render properties rented less than 14 days cumulative in the calendar year. What if it's um, mm -hmm. less than 14? I'm just trying to put short term in with it someplace where it doesn't sound as clunky. Well, the short term is 31 or fewer days. Right. So this says basically short term residential properties 
rented less than 14 cumulative days in a calendar year. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think yeah. that could work. What do you think, Pat? I think it can work also. Say it again, Lynn. Short-term Short residential prop residential rental properties. Property. Yeah, just add short term in front of it. And that's it. Yeah. And that takes I think that takes care of that. And and Athena, the T in term needs to be capitalized. It's the way we defined it. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I'm <laughs> yes, go ahead. I just have a question. If so, if the definition of short term capital S capital T is different in the section in the definition, then why would we add it here? Because that's a it, we're using a different definition here. So I believe the short term up in nineteen. So this is where it's not a different definition. Okay. That, that that's that's the confusion here, which is why how do we get it clear? The definition in item nineteen is to say if you have a lease for less than, or a rental agreement for 31 or fewer days, you qualify as, quote, a short-term rental. Um, and so maybe we need to add, you know, down in F1D, it says short-term rentals. And so maybe the term shouldn't be short-term, it should be short-term rentals at, in the defined part in number 19 and B19 and then make sure we add it in. And so so we're saying you are a short-term rental if your lease agreements are less than 31 days. And if you have lease agreements less than 31 days, when you apply for a permit, you must prove that the property is registered with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for short-term rentals and payment of taxes. There's, a, there's an Airbnb tax now, right? And you have to disclose the number of calendar days you rent that property as a short-term rental in the previous year. So you have two different, two extra application requirements if you are, if your rental property is defined as a short-term rental. So maybe number 19 in B, that term short-term, should actually say short-term rental. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. the short term and that might help clear stuff up. Yes, yes. Um, Good. And then yeah. anytime it shows up, so then F D F one D the R in rental needs to be capitalized, um, and D one also. Anytime it shows up, oh, we didn't even short term didn't have the hyphen in D F one D one. Um, you know, and so so we're trying to be clear that short-term rentals are applicable, that, that this bylaw applies to them. Except and if, if, the 14 if you are an Airbnb, mm -hmm. you have to, in order to get your permit, you have to prove you're paying your taxes under state law, basically. Um, and under state law, short-term is defined as 31 or fewer days, a month or fewer. But we're then also saying, if you are renting your property out, if me as a person um, decides I'm going away for a week in the summer and only a week, or I'm going away for the homecoming weekend or graduation weekend, and during that graduation weekend, I rent out my house to someone, I don't need a permit under this bylaw to do so because while yes, I am a short-term rental, I am not doing it for more than 14 days cumulative in a calendar year. Now, if I do it for my one week vacation in the summer and homecoming weekend and all three graduation weekends, and so I get to 15 days, yes, I now need a permit. That's what FE4 is trying to say. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so if you fall into this exemption, you still have to do the state process for airbnb stuff possibly i don't know how because they divide it they define it by less than 31 days not less than 31 and more than 14. i i don't actually they define for landlord tenant eviction type laws 31 is the cutoff between when you gain a lot of tenancy uh, pr protections uh-huh 
I, I don't know what short-term rental under the Airbnb law is, is where that comes in. Um, but, but you gain a lot more tenant protections if you've got a lease that is more than 31 days long. Um, whereas if you're like a hotel or something where you've, you've got an agreement for one night, you don't have the same eviction protections that someone who's been there for 40 days does. That's where the 31 day cutoff comes in. I actually don't know Airbnb wise where those requirements are. Um, in people, terms of like how, when, when do you need a registration certificate? And mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, but what we're saying is for purposes of local bylaw, we do not need you to get a residential rental permit from the town of Amherst if you're doing the Airbnb thing for for less than 14 days, 13 or fewer days in a year. We're not right. going to make you go through our residential rental property bylaw. But if you're doing the Airbnb thing for 14, 15, 21, 300 days a year, you have to go through this process. Okay, are we comfortable to move on? Yep. Keep going then. I assume the yellows are all because on, yeah, on second. something changes. Yeah, the yellows are just section references, so it's easy to see. <laughs> it's you. easy to find if you're like, oh, I just changed section H to L. <laughs> um, where are all the yeah. changes? So that, that's really all it is. They, they come out when we're done maxing with stuff. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So this used to have sections on emergency access and all, and we removed those in CRC. Um, okay. And and this is this comment is why up in C or whatever Constitution U.S. Massachusetts, all of those that other language was added about conformance with that. Um, we're not overriding any of those protections here. Okay. I is there any way to note any of this here, or do we think it's sufficient above? I, this, I mean, this is almost like the crux of what some of the people are saying in the legal stuff. Yeah, I mean, the own what? So L one owner and for example, could we say something about? state law, state and federal law take precedence over anything here or? that That's what um, C, e, C, section C on page two says, state law not preempted. Okay. Nothing in this bylaw mm -hmm. shall supersede, alter, or vary the requirements okay. of U.S. Constitution, the Massachusetts Constitution, and the Massachusetts Sanitary Building, Reg Fire, or other Commonwealth or local laws or regulations related to that. So that's that's where I think Lauren that's in the other letter said because of C, we're not we're not preempting that. And so if there's a conflict, state law you know prevails. prevails. But okay. we're saying, hey, you know, tell the landlord needs to notify the tenants of this. Um, or makes it needs to make a good faith effort to arrange access. Yeah. Um, and we're tempting, you know, and, and owner inspection authorization is saying, if you want a rental permit, you as owner are authorizing an inspection, the inspection that's required to do that. That's not saying we're not going to give you notice, right? You know, um, and all, um, but if the owner, the owner can't, the, what L1 is saying is the owner themselves cannot refuse to allow their property to be inspected if they want a permit. Right. Okay. Just like I can't refuse to allow my car to be inspected if I want a license, <laughs> a license right. 
right. date issued and a registration issued. Yeah, I can refuse to have it inspected if I don't want to be able to drive, right? Like <laughs> you, you want a service. We're saying you yourself owner need to allow that inspection. Right. We're not saying the tenant has to. We if you're, we're saying notify the tenant, or make a good faith effort, but we're also going to follow all the tenant laws okay. about that. Okay. And Jonathan here doesn't indicate that that is problematic. Yeah, basically he's saying use the other laws. Just right. Right. Yeah, on an emergency basis, he says this law is not the one that's going to be used because the other laws are already more favor uh, favorable to the inspectors to get them in. Yeah. Okay, are we comfortable to move on? Yeah. So it's length of inspection. Here we go. I think we can just simply add a sentence towards the end that says the principal code official has the authority to determine the length of the expense or makes the determination or something. Right. The has the authority to determine the length of the suspension. Yeah. He kind of gave us the language, right? Yeah, he did. Good. Do we need to say authority has the authority to just determine or will determine? Oh, like it's, it's authorized to, I think is how we do it. Yeah, has the authority to determine. Or is maybe is authorized to. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And that takes care of that one, I believe. Yeah. She's going to make her little note. Yeah. Her GOL. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to do this to help Pat write a report about these changes. Uh, I'm not going to. No, I think this also is useful for the council. Yeah. 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 So it looks and, like. And, okay, go ahead. So I was going to say, we don't want to vote on this until we've done the regulations, because there's a comment in the regulations that refers to a conflict with the bylaw so we might want to oh, maybe we should look when at we the... get to that let, let's finish the regulations and then and then do the bylaw um there, like, zoom this in. can you make it smaller <laughs> i'm like i'm looking at this and i'm going there we go <laughs> So I think the first two comments, what in Jonathan said this the first time this was reviewed at CRC, but the language was, uh, the original language Jonathan reviewed was a response to a message left on this number shall be returned or responded to. And we changed shall to should um, to address his concerns the first time. Uh, so I just wanted to note that for GOL's purposes here, it's not a mandate anymore. It's a suggestion, a strong suggestion of should be. Um, but Jonathan still has some concerns, it looks like. Right. And it seems that what basically what he's saying is that a uh, court won't uphold it. Um and he's saying it would be hard to enforce and and right. it's really not enforceable with the word should anyway right um yeah i don't see it yeah it's not but the crc's thought was okay shall is not enforceable there's problems there if we change it to should we're still ex we're still putting forth in the regulations the expectation and and setting forth what um expectations the town has for access to these numbers. The question is for GOL, is that enough or should it be struck? Hmm. What's actually, the danger of striking it? I don't see any. That's Does it make sense if 
if it's just a should, does it make sense to just say in a reasonable amount of time? In a re yeah. Rather than striking it or left on a number by the town. So so what John uh, John Thompson and Rob Moore said the reason they like this and and this was actually it's not in the current bylaw but it's in state colleges I think mm -hmm. as shells um but but again when you're in the middle of the night and I think John regularly talked about a fire that mm -hmm. displaced tenants and they're trying to do stuff at the property and they need to contact an owner waiting 4 hours for the owner to wake up and respond keeps the tenants you know is is not is not good service for anyone there as everyone's standing around waiting for owners to respond to a telephone number and so they thought having these expectations in there would be helpful um you know i i'm more worried about the tenant should the response to the tenants than I am to the town, like the second? Yeah, it it, it seems to me like that's regulating the relationship between the tenant and the and well, the owner. You know, but uh, maybe wow. maybe get rid of that one, but leave the one about the town. And if we leave the one about the town for Jonathan's sake, could we say something, a response to a message regarding an emergency left on this number or something like, like putting it in and say, you know, something that, that indicates the should and, and why, why well, we're saying an hour, right? <laughs> like, I think, I think it's in the sentence above that, Athena, oh, yeah. a response to a message left in the case of emergency. Yeah. Or wherever it belongs, yeah. there's a um, grammatical. Eight to the start of the first highlight, right? A response to a message left on this number in case of emergency by the town or something like that. Or it should be by the town in case of emergency. Yeah. Right. Or, yeah. And then I think the suggestion was to delete this, the last sentence of that, that yeah, one. I, yeah. I just take it out. And Athena, Athena, uh, at the end of the meeting, can you send me this version? Mm -hmm. The and email they... address should, shall not be considered. What are you reading? The next uh, one. Number three. Yeah. Uh, does this need to take out our tenant? Well, I, I guess the question is, would we leave in any time frames or is it just the email address shall not be considered an emergency contact period? I, I think that's cleaner. There needs to be a period after contact, unless I guess the period it's is at the end. Yeah. At the end yeah. Still. Okay. So this B one A comment is where it he identifies a conflict with the bylaw. Um. So the bylaw, yeah. So the bylaw. Let me pull up I one. So the bylaw says, and and this this we've been trying to figure out how to meld these the regulation with the bylaw requirement 
and and we've gotten closer. Jonathan had a lot more conflicts the first time between <laughs> these two sections. <laughs> um, um, the bylaw says inspection required in accordance with the applicable laws and regulations adopted under this bylaw and except as provided in section IB1, residential rental property shall have passed an inspection by the town of its dwelling units, common areas, exteriors, and yards in accordance with the applicable frequency schedule in the regulations adopted under this bylaw before a permit is issued or renewed to confirm blah, blah, blah. So that's where it says it has to pass before it is issued or renewed as in accordance with the applicable laws. Now, and this bylaw. Um, now, the a conditional permit can be issued, um, a residential rental permit that does not pass the initial or renewal inspection or has been scheduled for an initial or renewal inspection that has not yet occurred, but has complied with all other requirements may be issued a conditional permit. The conditional permit shall. So, um, So the question is, how do we meld those two sections with this initial inspection requirement? One thing that could be done is in the frequency schedule, um, initial inspection, all residential rental properties shall be inspected prior to the issuance of the first residential rental permit issue. You know, just get rid of the or within six months, um, right? Do you want to refer to that section of the bylaw in here? That might be a good idea. So so what we could potentially add in as, as that good idea, Athena, is initial inspection prior to the issuance. If an inspection is, is scheduled, a conditional permit may be issued. You know, in accordance with, oh, what would that be, G4. Uh, did you say a G four? Um, no, just G four. You want to put the? Yeah, it's of the bylaw. So, in accordance with bylaw section G four. Oops. No, so so in a, yeah, I think you can just add section in front of the G four that's already there. You want to capitalize the word section. Yeah, I'm still confused. All residential prior to the issuance, the first residential rental permit issued. So our present bylaw requires this, right? So, no. Our present bylaw requires a property owner in its application to obtain a permit to certify that the property and dwelling unit comply with all code, mass code regulations and local Amherst zoning bylaws. Okay, so I, I'm a long-term owner of a rental property. Mm -hmm. And I read this. Does it mean I have to rush? I can't rent until I get another permit? So this is where a B one A one for clarity upon adoption of this bylaw, all residential rental property, whether or not they have prior, will need to undergo an initial inspection within five years of the effective date of the bylaw. So that's where we've tried to say, 
you know, does that mean then that the conditional, this, this is where we've struggled, right? We know if adopting this, not every property can be inspected before between January and July of this year. Right. Right. Um, and so that's where B1A1 comes in of once this is adopted, there will be a schedule um, with an initial inspection. And so how does that, do, maybe, um, maybe that B1A1 would be better in the bylaw itself instead of the regulations because it would override the bylaw that says, and then you wouldn't need a conditional permit, you would be able to get a permit or something. It, it's still, I mean, um, I'm, this is where I'm, I'm not you, I'm not the people that have, you know, dwelled on this. So I don't know where else to look particularly. I, I'm i just looking at this and it, it makes me feel like as a long-term owner, I can't rent until I get a, rent, a new residential rental permit under this law. Well, that is correct. You would need to follow this law to get the one, if this is adopted now, um, you would need to follow the new bylaw to obtain your renewal permit in July. Right. Can we pause briefly and confirm that sure. Jennifer can hear and be heard? She joined the meeting at 10, 11. Jennifer? Can yes, I can hear. Thank you. And Jennifer has a hand up. Go ahead, Jen. Um, no, I just wanted to say, so if you apply for a permit, but you haven't received it yet, you can begin to rent. So if, if you want to have a renter, you could start them like tomorrow as long as you put in your application. So you don't have to wait till the application's approved. Isn't that correct, Mandy? Uh, no. You, the, the way the bylaw is written, except under exemptions, it shall be unlawful for the owner of residential rental property to operate or rent to individuals or households, households residential rental property or any dwelling unit um, until the applicable permit, including a conditional permit, has been issued. So, so is that, okay. I thought maybe it's different than it is now. I thought Rob had said as long as your paperwork was in. But, but, so the conditional permit that we put into the bylaw, and this is where maybe some of this regulations need to move back into the bylaw. The conditional permit in the bylaw says if you've submitted your application and you failed your inspection or your inspection is scheduled, but we haven't done it yet, we can issue you as long as every other part of that application is complete. So if you're a short-term rental, you've proven you've got the state whatever, and you've submitted everything else required, then we can issue a conditional permit as you wait await that inspection. How long it's is the conditional only, permit effective? So the conditional permit under the bylaw, um, let me find that section again. A conditional permit, um, a, the conditional permit shall, shall specify the duration of the permit and the time frame during which the inspection deficiency shall be remedied or the inspection shall take place. Um, so the conditional permit, so so I guess at, if we look at this five year, trying to get everyone in five years, the first four years, the first year, 80% of the um, rentals, if not more, may have a conditional permit because the inspection is scheduled four years out or something, right? Um, and that's, that's, that's how the difficulty is how do you implement a bylaw over five years, right? Um, well, but that's what this bylaw is. That's, that's that's what is going to happen with this bylaw. Right. And so then how do you account for that five-year implementation in the bylaw itself? And I think what Jonathan is identifying here in the, the inspection, initial inspection and all is 
or, you know, or it, it might be required inspection instead of initial inspection. So it seems to me that all property, all people who presently have permits should be allowed to continue as long as they're paying their fees and all that other good stuff until their first inspection takes place. And yes. that somehow or another, I, I would be very uncomfortable with a rental that says conditional permit for four years. Right. So, and so that's, that's the, how, how do we word the two together? So for that, so somehow or another, is there is there an implementation section either here, like there was, remember in the charter, there was that section about implementation. And I don't think that belongs in the bylaw. I think it probably belongs in the regulations. But so some there's not a specific implementation section, but B1A1, the section right below this blue section is where we as CRC attempted to, it's right there, just, just the, the immediate next yeah. paragraph, the for clarity paragraph, is where CRC attempted to say, hey, we know we can't do this. And so that five-year inspection requirement sort of starts right away. And we know some properties will not get that initial inspection for four and a half years. So why don't we, why do you need A, A, what's under A? Why can't one be adopted to basically say, upon adoption of this bylaw, all residential rental properties, whether or not their prior resident will need to undergo an initial inspection within five years, and then go on. Why this, this, this piece, A, makes it seem like properties will be going backwards. I think there's merit to what uh, Lynn's suggestion. So B says, I, I'm, I'm thinking three things. B says five-year inspection requirement. Within every five-year period, each residential rental property shall be inspected unless the dwelling unit is exempt from inspection under the bylaw or is subject to an annual or other periodic inspection as set forth below. Um, so the question I think Lynn is asking is given B, the five-year inspection let not, is A, other than A1 or even A1, is A necessary other than implementation upon adoption? And the implementation upon adoption might need to be in the bylaw itself because it needs because a regulation can't override a bylaw requirement. Right. Absolutely. I, I think that may be yes. Is there any way we can look at this side by side? It's gonna be tough with this screen. Um I, I can do that for if if Athena needs I, help. I no I got it. Let me just give me a second to get these side by side. Hang on. This is like this one of the sticky points. It sounds like it's something you've all wrestled with a lot. Yeah. Well, we've, we've tried to, the, the part of the sticking point is what goes in the regulations and what goes in the bylaw, right? Yeah. Because we right. want the regulations to be um, more flexible because the, that the regulations can be more responsive in terms of changing than a bylaw can be. Mm -hmm. Something's not working. And, and so with this inspection frequency, we've we've tried to sort of thread that needle between what needs to be in the bylaw and you know set for and what can be more flexible. Okay, so. What section did you want to see? 
So you just the, right, the right, section. right section up. I yeah. want it. Yeah, that's the correct section. So it's 1A that we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah. So 1A does that, and then in the regulations, B1, B sets forth the frequency schedule. And so maybe B1A of the regulations is not needed other than B1A1, which might need to be put into section I1B. Well, that's exempt from it, except as you know, or right. in sections, we would we could add an I one C or D or something um, that that talks about implementation. You didn't have to, yeah, like before this principal code official, maybe there's a, a the five year like in the first five years um, that I'm. Let me think about language, but it could essentially be that for clarity paragraph, but allows for an actual permit to be issued instead of a conditional permit. Because Something... of its concern that, you know, conditional sounds scary for from a tenant point of view necessarily, potentially. You're trying to just say this should be C and then C would become D. C would become D, yes. Okay, so um, make it separate. So I'm not trying to mesh C with, yeah. Okay, yeah. so we want to say something in C that basically assures people that if they're presently permitted, their permit is valid until inspection happens. Okay, well, no, their permit will not be. They'll still need a new permit every year. A permit is a one-year thing. They'll right. still okay. need to obtain it. So it's not that, it's it's that their permit could be a permit, not a conditional permit. So so let me try some language. Yeah, this is not going to come. Um, well, actually we are, it, well, it, I don't see. Let, let me try some language. You guys can move on to something else. We can come back or give me like 30 seconds here. You got it. Go ahead. The amount of work that's gone into this is astounding. And it's, you know, it's work that you've all done with staff, which is really helpful. I think the big issue that we want to make sure is that, and that's why it's being in GOL is important, is that we aren't doing something that in fact lands us in court because we've broken some, you know, federal or state law You okay, Jen? Yes, I'm trying to find a place where I have good internet. Okay, so let me try this. I'm gonna read it, Athena. In the bylaw? The, in the, for in the bylaw directly, a new C. Okay. All residential rental property that currently has a residential rental permit. Oh wait, sorry. At the beginning, at the beginning of that, 
start with the phrase upon adoption of this bylaw. Yeah. So upon adoption of this bylaw, all residential rental property that currently has a residential rental permit will need to undergo an inspection or I guess it should be shall undergo, not yeah, shall. Will, shall. An inspection within five and five is written out and then in parentheses the number years of the effective date of the bylaw. Period. During this transition, such residential rental property may be issued a permit instead of a conditional a permit, instead of a conditional permit, if it is awaiting this required inspection. Required inspection. A required. No, the, this, I think this is fine, but, and then go up to, um, I1A, the just one page up the paragraph above that has the that except as provided in section I1B should now read sections I1B and C. And I1C. Well, no, that's uh, that's what it says. Yeah, uh, okay, got it. I1B and C. Um, and, and, and then I, I think. What your what's your question, Athena? No, go ahead, Mandy. I'll ask after. I think then in the regulation side of the screen, um, section A under frequency schedule can be deleted completely. Yeah. Um, including one. Yeah. A. Yeah. Including that for clarity purposes. And. This becomes a okay, and then in this part, um, in the bylaw, am I missing capitalizations? Residential rental property is capitalized or no? Residential rental property is capitalized, conditional permit is capitalized. And or does residential rental permit? Um, yes, and the word permit would also be you're capitalizing anything that's defined. I know, but I don't yes. know that off the top no, of my head. Yeah, I'm, and, and in just... fact, I, I saw in some of this that conditional permit is not always defined, is not always capitalized in the paragraph where we reference conditional permit. So that needs a little bit of fixing. So we permit. Although then... we didn't define conditional permit, although in, in the definition section, but everything else is. So we don't need capitalizations for conditional permit. Well we've done it both ways on page four of the bylaw well let's choose a way let's put, capitalize anything that's defined so it's not conditional permit is not i don't think is defined in the definitions let me check it is not defined in the definitions okay. maybe that needs to be done no it's it's explained in on page four yeah, now I, I'm seeing that. And so. Right there. Yeah, it's explained there. And in that paragraph, sometimes it's capitalized and sometimes it's not mid paragraph. I, I choose to capitalize. I would too. So the first, yeah. the third, the third line of that at the very end has the word. <laughs> Excuse me. And then permit goes on. Okay. And then do we do it here so then we go back down to where we were and we capitalize it okay now now let's go back to b and see whether 1a makes sense uh, the 
in the regs? Yeah, yeah, we took it out. We took it all out and our 1A is... Right, the new 1A. Yeah. He only flagged the old 1A, so if it's taken yeah. out, the yeah. concern is fixed. Yeah, okay. Then we're back to looking at just the regulations. And our fabulous clerk of the town council is oh uh, actually go back to the the paragraph we just added in the yeah bylaw um notice yeah i think it would be clear if it says all residential re rental permit that has a resident all residential rental property that has a residential rental permit on the date of adoption of this bylaw or yep. this revision or something. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. It, it, this is still a rescind and replace. So is this going to be on the effective date or on the date of? Because are we going to make this bylaw effective? The I, date I think it's uh, all residential rental property that has a residential rental permit on the date the council votes to adopt this bylaw how about that and, and all i'm saying is when we vote this bylaw are we voting it to be effective immediately or are we going to be giving it a different effective well, date so it's always effective two weeks after we adopt no matter what okay. i mean the, the default is the effective date is two weeks after the vote so the effective okay. date is different than the vote to adopt um I think there was, I'd have to look at my report to see if we had a specific effective date in the report from CRC. Well, we might have an April 1 effective date instead of two weeks later, so that it would be, or or something that indicated it was for all effective, for all renewals, you know, for permit year. I'd, I'd have to look at the motion that we had. Yeah, my only understanding is that if we're going to adopt this and we have it and we want it to basically be applicable to the biggest permitting time of the year, we want to get it adopted before January 1st. Yeah. Okay. Or That's April 1. I'd, I'd, I'd have to look. The renewals generally start in May and June. Um, yeah. Right. So I like I said, I'd have to look at how CRC worded it. Okay. Um. Don't we need to do upon the effective date of this bylaw? I think it's that. I I, yeah. I I don't think it's the date we adopt. I think it's the effective date we adopt. Or how could how date. could someone be subject to a bylaw that isn't effective yet? Okay. Right. Right. Um all residential rental property that has a residential permit on the effective date, on the effective date of this bylaw, shall undergo an inspection within five years of the effective date. <laughs> this bylaw shall under of the bylaw. We say three times. Um, yeah, there's an extra the in there too. No, so I think I I think that's the the first clause upon the effective date of this bylaw can now get deleted. That that was the point of my rewording. So the, the the paragraph starts with all residential rental that has a permit on the effective date of the bylaw shall undergo an inspection. That that makes sense. Yeah. Do we need to say of the bylaw again? If we say effective. Yeah. No, we do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and we tend to capitalize the word bylaw. We tend to. I'd love to see a style manual for us. Well, we tend to do this. Well, well, it. it I do. I it's do. not a. It, it's not just bylaw in general. It's a specific reference to a specific yeah. bylaw. I'm trying to be funny. Yeah. Sorry. And that's a total gol thing right there. Yeah. Yep. Oh, totally. I mean, this is. I have. I don't think anything we've done is inconsistent with gol's mission. No, it's all been. Yeah. We do have an audience, so we're going to have public comment when we finish I know. going through this. All right. So I, so think, I think that addresses 
Jonathan's comments from the regulation section. B1. Yeah, I think it does too. So there's just one more comment in the regulations for him. Maybe it's easier than this one. It is. Isn't that specific? I, you're going to have to, you know. So Jonathan says, are, asks the question, are you sure you want to add a specific time frame into this? It's not in the bylaw, and so it's optional here. Um, so are you can impose the additional requirement by regulation, but do you want to? Um, I, what's the harm of getting rid of this? There isn't one. Get rid of it. There are. We, you know, we tend to write bylaws and forget that somebody's going to be re or whatever at regulation. Somebody's going to be reading it twenty years from now, and say, "Well, when was sixty days?" <laughs> okay, are we ready for a motion? I think. Are we, we do, or do we have to now wait for GOL? We are GOL. I mean, I'm I mean, sorry, finance. finance. I don't so if this was this, you know, if we believe all of these changes and we might want to go through the bylaw changes because Jennifer came in halfway through so she can see what what was done there. But um, if we believe all of these changes are in done because of clarity, consistency or actionability, these do not need to go back to CRC as a procedural matter because I we were doing what we were told to do. Right. Yeah. Right. So, Jen, would you like to see the, any amendments? There's to, not a lot. Or clarity. I guess, I guess if there's not a lot, I don't want to make you go through it. Is, is there anything you think I'd want to see? <laughs> I really don't think there were any. There were no substantive okay. changes. I trust so, you. Yeah. Lynn, I'll, I'll summarize. Wait a second. Quickly. Lynn had her hand up. No, no, no. Uh, I think Lynn was agreeing. Uh, in in the bylaw, the person in charge we removed because of Jonathan's comment from the requirement to live in Hamden, Hampshire, Hampton, Franklin right. County, and made it to respond um, with regard to the property in a timely manner, as the attorney suggested. Um, we add, added some clarifying language regarding short-term rentals and short-term permit exemptions. Um then the biggest change was the one you were here for that we just did when we added a whole section to the bylaw. Um, okay, thank you. Sounds good. Yeah, and then another comment was who does the length of inspection or makes that decision? And so we clarified that by adding a sentence. And those are the changes to the bylaw. Okay, great. I'm glad you did the hard work before I got on. Oh. I need the names of the two. Are we going to, are we going to motion for them so, separately or together say that again Lynn. you want to do them separately as one as i two think we can do them. it as one oh i'll i'll make the the motion then um Second. i move to declare the proposed three general bylaw 3.50 residential rental property as amended today and the proposed regulations for general bylaw 3.50 residential rental property as amended today, clear, consistent, and actionable. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay, well, I'll start the, the, only, the only thing I would suggest is that we say as amended 11 15 2023. Yeah, not that. Yeah. I got that. Okay, I trusted Athena on that one. Okay. okay, I'm gonna call for a vote. Jennifer? Yes. Mandy? Aye. Lynn? Yeah. And I'm an I. Good work. Good work. I um, have to honestly say I didn't think we could do that, but I am delighted. Yeah, I'm glad you pushed on it. That's good. Um see noting noticing the presence of members of the public. Um, in attendance, I'm going to call for a period uh, of uh, public comment now. 
at 10.41 a.m. If you'd like to make public comment on issues before the committee, please raise your hand. Seeing no raised hands, I'm gonna call an end to the public comment period. Um, Pat, with your permission, I'll forward these new drafts to Andy and add them to the Finance Committee packet. Yes, that, that would be great. And also forward it to me, if you don't mind. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and Mandy Jo, I just want to, and Jennifer, both. We did call Friday's meeting of finance as a committee of the whole. So if, and we did that because of the discussion regarding the library. But if we get to this, then if either one of you or both of you are there, it would be really helpful. Yeah, and, and I Pat, will not and be Pat as well. I will not be there. I will be traveling that day. Yeah. Okay. And the meeting is at one o'clock? It is. But I, the library is going to be the major discussion. So this residential rental bylaw and regulation will be on for a first read next Monday? If possible. If it fits in. And I, I would argue that the fee structure does not need to have necessarily two readings, unlike the bylaw that does. Oh. And so if we could start the reading schedule Monday even if finance is not done, they're only dealing with the fee schedule. That's Even correct. if they're not done with the fee schedule, it would help. I think it would be beneficial. I, I Mandy Jo, I think that's a good suggestion. Thank you. I, You're correct. We do not need to do the fee schedule at the same time. Finance is now, I don't even know, uh, Thana, you may not know this, but we're now actually looking at having a finance committee on the 20. Eighth, I think it is at one o'clock. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is twenty eighth at one o'clock. Uh oh, poor Athena. No, I'm <laughs> just won't be there. Okay. Well, and if you can't. You know, we'll do what we did yesterday. Okay, yeah, I'll carry it off. Okay. Um, what I'd like to do now is, I think, uh, is to move to the town manager goals. There were still some specifics that Pam Rooney had uh, forwarded to us. And is there anything else we need to do on that before a draft is given to the count council? Lynn? Lynn and then Jennifer. I didn't. I didn't think we had a draft ready for the council. We d we don't. That's because we were going to work on it again today. Then I would like to make an overall general comment, and that is consistent with my. I'm just going to deal with my own personal feelings. Okay. Mm -hmm. We need to move off of getting into such specificity that. This sounds as if we're trying to tell the town manager not just what our goals are, but how he has to achieve them. Right. It's a fine line. And I I just know in writing our own evaluations, my own evaluation of the town manager with this level of specificity, I would personally tell you that if I were looking for a town manager job and I had to look at these goals, I would just say, Amherst, no. I'm not even remotely interested. You, your town council is trying to manage me. And I, we need to find a way that this, I, I know other counselors are saying this, I'm going to say it just for myself. When I, when I try to do this evaluation, it is onerous. And when the town manager writes his own self-evaluation, it is onerous onerous and how do we move to something that is much more respectful of the fact that you hire good people 
you let them know what is generally expected and you get out of their way. So I'm just that I, I, I dropped out of the conversation last week or the last time we did this, partly because I just can't stand the specificity that people want. I, I find it just not appropriate at this level. It, there's a way in which uh, I agree with you, Lynn, because I feel like there are specifics being put in that we as a council haven't discussed really, and that there are individual uh, demands. And I, I think that I think that we are, in most instances, being too specific. I also think we have too many. Uh, there were, if you went through last year's goals for the town manager, when he was writing his his self evaluation, he had to address ninety one goals and sub goals. I I don't know of anybody that has ninety one goals on their performance evaluation. It used to be in the hundreds. <laughs> well, and we used to rate the sub goals as well. <laughs> and then we said, no, we're going to stop doing we're, that. Well, we're that's, getting there. That's um, fine for us. But how are we? And and then, you know, and I'm the one, I know I chose this to be, to do this, but writing that up in a way that even is readable and makes sense is also onerous. So part of me and then Mandy part of me wants to just give you the average ratings and say here read what all the counselors said Jennifer yeah so I, I yeah I just find I do find this whole process very fraught and I even put it in my evaluation that so under a certain heading there'll be five subheadings and you can't necessarily give one mark <laughs> to all five because a lot of progress may have been made in one maybe less in another and then we're not in town hall so we don't necessarily know what pro progress has been made on others so but i so something like the waste hauler i think we had to be specific because the town manager said if you want me to make if we wanted him to allocate staff time to it, it had to be a town manager goal. So that's why we put it in. But I also agree with Pat that we don't want things in there that we may never as a council have or individual committees heard of before. And that's why I reacted to that gateway coming in. It was so specific and we'd never discussed it. So, so it's a happy, so that, that's what I'm struggling with. What, you know, again, like somebody may say, well, waste hauler was too specific, but the town manager did ask us. So basically he was saying there that we as a council have to decide if that's a priority and if it is to make that a goal. So is it on us to be more? So how do we strike that balance between being specific and general? A good question, Mandy. And so I... I, I agree with everything. Um, and I wonder if, you know, we don't have a lot of time, but could we potentially create a new document so that this document, I, I would hate to modify this and lose this and present a document that, that the document that's in the packet now that adds all the specific specificity and adds things that people want in, in, but also sort of do a save as, and then take a hatchet to it um, uh. to go back to a more general one and present both to the council with a, here is a potential. So I look at climate action and some of these are more general, some are more specific, but within climate action, there are now, um, well, there are four big ones. Um, we haven't fixed the letters. So there were like six um, seven small ones last year. We've deleted some because they were done, but those were really specific things. And then we have unnumbered like four other suggestions, right? Did um, you look at that? Uh, we did, we did. But I, no, no. For the, I'm for asking the purposes, Athena to put it up. I'm sorry. Yeah, for the purposes of conversation, if we were to go the route that uh, the the less specificity, we could keep number one 
delete number two um other than you know because that one's fairly specific as to how to meet the climate action and just under climate action you know the delete the um joint jpe formation because that's really specific if we're thinking specific spe specific versus not um number three is the waste hauler bylaw but maybe it's support the town council in developing and bringing to votes bylaws that further climate action goals or something something that's not specific necessarily to waste hauler itself but you know when we've referred to a bylaw to a committee we expect support for that bylaw development right um and then number five delete all of the a b c d e's and just say take action on you know, the CARP plans that have been prioritized for 22, 23, and 24 period, or 22 to 25 period, and delete all the other specificity in there. And then we had some potential additions of e-bike networks, staffing strategies by grants and CARP stuff and all. Um, and maybe we could add a goal that ensure, you know, but maybe that's the way to, to change this up of, delete a lot of it. That's just one example based on what people said. Jennifer? Yeah, that I don't feel comfortable with because I don't, you know, if we wanted the joint powers agreement, which is specific, but it's impactful. I mean, we want that, I think, or we want waste taller time to vote. I think we have to be specific or I don't think they would happen. Lynn? Um, I think that, that there's ways to, I, I like what Mandy Joe, the tendency Mandy, or the trend that Mandy Joe was going in. And uh, at the same time, I know that ECAC is going to want to find all of the things they want under the CARP. Okay. So, but I still think it's worth trying. Now, I, I, I don't necessarily agree with, I can't see it, but agree with deleting um, two. Um, but I think we save this document as it is, and let's try what Mandy Joe is suggesting and see whether or not, you know, Jennifer's already said, I think we need to leave two in. Fine, leave two in. So we've saved this, correct, Athena? Okay. Yep, it's in the packet with, with red lines and, and I yeah. think I have yeah. word versions there too. Okay, so now take what Mandy Joe just said and show us the document as if, the, you know, show the unmarked document. You mean accept all changes? Yeah, no, no, or, no. Or just, just do a simple show. Just do a simple show. A view of a simple instead of all markup, simple markup. Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, oh, it that one, that drop down, just simple. Yeah, there we go. Now, taking this. So with what I said, I, I'm fine with JP. That was, again, a suggestion. We can leave one, two, three, and then four would be reworded. Can I? Hold on. She's right. saving. Let, let me do this so I don't end up making yeah, changes. Yeah, take your time, Stina. You know, the CARP one would be rewarded to take action on the CARP that have been prioritized for FY 22, 3, and 4 without any of the subsets, I think. And then all of the stuff in brackets would be deleted, I think. Okay, so. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, Number four in climate action. Yes. Would just be take action on the. On the climate action adaptation resiliency plan that have been prioritized for 24 period. Take action on the portions of the climate action. And, right. Yeah. So in other words, Do from you want FY25. So in other words. That have been prioritized for 
24 and part, that have been prioritized through 2020 FY 2025 maybe yes FY25 period. Yeah. And then take out all of that. All and of the brackets. Them. And then I think take the bracket part out too, which was some of the potential things that could be added into this section. Right. Now go up to. Jennifer has a hand up before we. Oh, I'm sorry, please. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jen. I wasn't. Okay, so everything that was just taken out is part of the priorities, the portions. Okay. Yeah. Why can't we say under two? I'm sorry, I should raise my hand. Go ahead. It's fine. Uh, uh, under, no, no, not two, that two. Go up, uh, go up above. Under climate action number two, just say complete joint powers agreement, isn't it? Entity? Um, JPE formation and... CCA implementation, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or why don't we just say complete implementation of joint powers entity? Well, the joint powers entity is different than CCA. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. right. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. And what, how, what do you want to do to waste hauler? So I had suggested instead of waste hauler specific, but we can talk about this because I think there's a under the council stuff down below. Instead of waste hauler, you know, what, what's this one say? Support the town council in developing and bringing to votes bylaws that are you know, bylaws that are climate. And I don't know. I don't necessarily think we necessarily need this one changed per se, other than if we're trying to go less specific, it wouldn't just be waste hauler. If in the next two years or a year, there's other climate action focused bylaws, we would want support for that. Yet down below in the management goals, there's a general support the town council in bylaws referred to committees or something like that. It also seems that you could say to... Um... Let me see. Take necessary steps towards um, and support the town council in developing bylaws, blah, blah, like a waste hauler bylaw. So you're referencing it, but you're not going into details and things like that. And you're setting the stage for more than one kind of bylaw. And then I guess the other question. Well, Jennifer, is you're next. I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, me? Well, I'm going to advocate for keeping waste hauler in. <laughs> It's moved really slowly, even being in there. I think it will disappear if we take it out. And so we could say waste hauler and others. But well, since we were asked to put it in and, and we're in process, I think it's not sending. I mean, you know, we're still going to see if it's feasible, but it's not. I would not be able to support it coming out. I'm not saying having it come out, but I think that the general trend here is that there are going to be other bylaws. Like well, could we waste say hauler. waste hauler and other bylaws? Why? But I don't think it should be. I mean, it's in process. The town manager said we had to specifically tell him we wanted him. You know, we're we're in process. I don't think we should. I I think I don't think I wouldn't be able to support saying we're just saying well you can. We're okay looking at bylaws that help get us to our climate action goals. No, I agree with you there. Yeah. But I don't believe that, I think it should say that bylaws first, like, and then we're referencing the waste hauler and we're saying, you're still working on this. You know, uh, I, I, you know, maybe that's too, I'm gonna go to, uh, unless you have a reason. Maybe including. Yeah, so what about, and bringing to a vote climate action focused bylaws, including a waste hauler bylaw period and getting rid of the description of what that waste hauler bylaw knows. I know the description is generally desired and all, um, but if we're trying to, that description really does also restrict what the waste right. hauler bylaw has to be. And then, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Uh, Jennifer, how'd that feel? What Mandy just feel suggested? Good. <laughs> 
It doesn't feel good. Why? No, because I I think what's in there, it 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 to me it waters it down too much. I mean I, I don't know that was in there for this no. year. We're still working on it. I think it I think this should stay there. Just like we mostly left the joint powers entity in the community choice aggregation, because that's in process. But we're not I saying that's feasible and meets the goal. You know, we're <laughs> if a bylaw is created that's not feasible, it's not going to pass. If conditions right. come forward to the council that make a waste hauler bylaw not good for the community, I'm not saying that, okay? I'm not saying that. that then we would vote against it. I'm going to jump to Lynn and we'll come back because. I want to shorten it even more. I want to say support the passage of climate action focused bylaws. And in parentheses. Um, e.g. such as the waste hauler bylaw the proposed waste hauler chain the what proposed changes to the waste hauler bylaw. And what about proposed changes to the solar bylaw that's going to be coming to us? What about that sounds good? No, it doesn't. <laughs> so what why passage instead of development? Yeah. Because, because passage is up to anything the... about passage. That's the 13 of us. You can yeah. say support the development development and passage. I think the issue is that I these I'm trying to also respect the fact that bylaws can originate in other places than the council. Yeah, so the passage is a problem to me unless we're willing to add passage into the housing affordability bylaw support work. Right. Or the okay, passage so of bylaw zoning bylaws that increase housing types in town, <laughs> which I have right. a feeling Jennifer yeah, might which... not. <laughs> okay. Like so what are we? Them, right? People can because afford them. It. I think part of the problem is that uh, most of us want some kind of waste hauler bylaw. So we're going. You know, it's not up to Paul to create passage or support passage. His job is to make sure that the staff is working with the council, that uh, people are reached out to, that and, and things like that. Not. I don't know. Okay, so say support the lot development of, of so support the development of climate action focused bylaws. Does that get does that get it at that piece of it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh the proposed changes to the waste hauler bylaw, comma. If it's just one and it doesn't get a comma. Right. Well, okay. Well, no, I think I think Lynn was was putting a comma after climate action focused bylaws and getting rid of the EG. Oh. Right, Lynn? Uh, that's fine. Comma, solar bylaw, comma, and and, and et cetera. I mean, I I just think about this year. Well, and and we others that council might propose or something or others that might be proposed. I don't know. Including, we could say including. Including potential bylaw, other potential bylaws, support. And other potential bylaws. Yeah. Okay. Jennifer? Yeah, I, I get the feeling we're moving away from wanting to put this in. No, the only, so with the waste hauler bylaw, it was like integral to it. The reason we wanted to revise the waste hauler, the process now is so it includes compost pickup, universal compost pickup, that's important to our climate action goals and that the fee structure incentivize reducing waste. So that's why the pay as you throw is in there. Right, 
but uh, they don't have to be listed as what for what if we what if we list them I mean, just including the proposed changes to the waste hauler bylaw to to offer to offer universal curbside compost pickup and pay as you throw fee structure um that's but it's what offer but they're in the bylaw right so why yeah. does, why do they I, have to be listed here so so i don't believe they do but jennifer does and i'm trying to seek a solution that yeah. that gets us moves us forward yeah that's a lot of yep go ahead I'm not going to say what I was going to so, say. So I think it would say including the proposed changes to the waste hauler bylaw that include universal curbside or include universal curbside compost pickup and pay as you throw feed structure. Does that feel okay, Jennifer? Um, yes. And I want to also just clarify, we're sending to the council both versions. Yes. Right, so they can also decide. Right, and they'll, then they'll, they'll both. Okay, what, Lynn? good. Lynn? Before we go, after you're done, Jennifer, I I just want to. That's say it. Sure. I just want to clarify that. So we're not making a final. We're just showing the council. That's right. So <laughs> on the twentieth, we have on the council agenda, which we haven't finalized yet, but we have we have planned for the council agenda to include. Uh, an initial discussion and then feedback will go to GOL. So the, this isn't the final presentation. The final report from GOL isn't on November 20. There's a feedback. And then and then a discussion and potential vote on December 4 after GOL revises them again based on the council feedback on the 20th. This is for the goals. Is that what you're talking about? Yep. Goals, yes. Okay. After the word structure. put comma and adoption of other potential bylaws such as the solar bylaw. Adoption's a problem. Yeah, it is a problem. Or, or, and development or whatever, what? No, I think you just have to say solar bylaw and other potential bylaws. Yeah. Okay, except here's the problem. It says support the development, I mean, including proposed changes. Yeah, see, that's and I, it's the proposed changes, oh, so don't including have a... the waste hauler bylaw that includes universal song. Some so instead of proposed changes too, including the waste hauler bylaw, then okay, that helps. That that does it for me then. Thank you. That's it for you, Jennifer. Jennifer, I'm sorry, I'm unmuting. Yes, that's fine. And again, this is. You know, I'm happy that it's going to go to the full council for a discussion. Yeah. Now, just for the sake of discussion, Athena, show this now with as if it, with all the markups showing. This is what we've done, and this is why I like what we're doing. I like shortening this and getting it. it I like it. So what I'm expecting will be in the council packet for Monday is a red line version of what was in the packet at GOL today and then a clean version of what GOL is talking about now. Is that what everyone's expecting? So in other words, given that it's now 1109, we're only going to show them what well, we did we for climate action. Well, I think we can see if we can get through the other ones. Uh, it, let's, I, let's see how much we can get minutes. Let's just see how much okay. we can Right. Some of these are less specific than others anyway. Right. Um, but that's what you're expecting to present. That was my question is. Yes. yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank so, you. So I think economic vitality. Oh wait, no, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. Yeah, we're at community health. So I think we could say continue implementation and assessment of the community responder blah 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 crash department period, or whatever. 
explore options for a youth empowerment center or programming in particular. Uh, do we, I, I think that one could be explore options for youth empowerment center um, and or programming. Um, mm -hmm. and propose, I agree. Pro, pro, and leave off incorporate input from youth because that would, although I like that, I'm still, well, and I think well, it has to happen. I don't know if it's necessary. But we were just developing programming here because the center itself was under a different item now. So I would end it with the word empowerment. Explore options for youth empower for a youth develop programming for youth empowerment. Yeah, develop. And then take out this bracket. Yeah. Under four, I. It's automatic that we appoint members, so we can take out that. Yeah, it's not necessary. Yeah. Nice and short, gang. Keep going. Jennifer, is this acceptable? Um. Yes, but I. Yeah, I'm still not personally that comfortable with the um, climate action, but I'll. I'll yeah, we're just going to try to go through some of yeah. these to show what we're interested in yeah. doing. So economic vitality, in some sense, it hurts me to remove number two, but I think number two, whether it was explore the feasibility of, which was the prior one, or fund, that is extremely specific on how to ensure the present and future economic health of right. the town. So it might need to go completely. So basically it would be one and three would become two. Three would become two. The and in, before three can get deleted. And we had said specificity on number two, but, but again, right? Like, and just say facilitate. Wait, hang on, Lynn. Athena, were you going to say something? Was that you before Lynn? I'm sorry. Mom. Okay, go ahead, Lynn. I'm I'd say together with the council can go and just um, capitalize, facilitate. It, can I just say in three, um, mm -hmm. it, how he does it is not the issue. It's do we... Um, yeah. So the RFP is out um, for this project. Hmm. It, 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 this is why it was in there in a way, because the RFP took two years to get out. But the RFP is out and they're reviewing the responses now. Um, so the question is, do we even need that other than um, potentially a number two increase and in support economic development throughout town again going with including form-based zoning or something mm -hmm. in number two and then three could then then potentially be deleted Three is vague, but I think it needs to be there, and I think it needs to be vague for the time being. Pat, Jennifer's hands up. I'm sorry, I was reading, Jennifer. I apologize. No, no, I just wanted to ask again. So, um, just to, so for all of this, the council will be able to see the track changes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I thought you wanted the track changes of the other version and a clean version of this one. I think it would be good to have a tract of both versions okay. and the clean yeah. of this one. Okay. 
so we're on housing affordability. Yeah. There's like eight of these, the Anne's in the wrong spot, but we'll see what we keep. Just put it there for now. Yeah. Okay. Woo. So yeah. How much of this is in the comprehensive housing policy? Because if it's if it's there, then do we need to yeah. So I if we do it, we would have to say and implement. So so the comprehensive housing the policy says here's where our goals should be. There's no required implementation of it per se. Right. So we would have to word add the word implement. So the ones that would be covered under the goals, um number one, number three, four potentially, five potentially, um Eight, <laughs> depending on the strategies you're talking about. I thought the comprehensive housing policy went to CRC with the town manager. For implementation. Implement. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. So isn't that already there? The implementation for the. As a referral. Okay. So did you want me to. Sorry, take things out. I'm looking at number five and propose measures to lower rents or address rental costs. What power does the town have? We can't do rent control. What power does the town have to regulate rent? Um, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It would be great. Jennifer? Yeah. I'm just wondering, was that... Um... Did that come about so that the did it did it have to do with the council supporting state initiatives? That's the only thing I can think it was. Retained. It did, it did, and Ooh. they just withdrew. They just stopped the effort yeah. yesterday. I know. I just read that. Yeah. Very upset. So, not surprising though. To go back to wait a, a the second, Mandy. Oh, um, Jennifer put her hand. Up. Go ahead, Mandy, and then Lynn. The Go ahead. I'd let Mandy Jo go because maybe she's got a way of combining some of these. Well, yeah, I'm just it. wondering if part of the issue has been, at least my frustration with all of this has been, we have a policy, but a lot of the focus on implementation of the policy is solely on supporting projects that do some of the policy. It's not about planning for the future and proposing proposing policy changes, regulation changes, zoning bylaw, non-zoning bylaw changes that would facilitate better implement, better or increased projects that would then, am I getting my point across clear? There's two parts to implementing the comprehensive housing policy. There's the, the sort of development of actual housing Right, which is one part, and the council doesn't really have much to say about the actual development of housing, and the town has limited to say other than supporting applications. Um, and then there's the revising our own regulations, bylaws, and policies themselves to ensure that we are meeting the comprehensive housing policy goals. Similar to the climate action goals, right? There's the the actual initiatives, but then there's the looking at our own policies and saying, what is structurally stopping us from meeting these goals? And what do we have to do structurally to change that? We can do that with our racial equity, right? What is a structural issue? And I feel like the manager has focused not on only the 
building of stuff and not the fixing of the structural issues. And that's where the council needs help. And how do we then write this to address both of those? Lynn? I'm gonna suggest that we not try to do this one today, number one. The other thing I wanna just put out there and that is the reason I don't think we can do this today and I'm not even sure we can do it at the council is the council does not have a vision that people, that all counselors have bought into. And so part of me wants to step back when we deal with this one and focus on something that's broader than just saying, do this, do that, do it this. Right. Okay. So I'm going to suggest that we just note that we did not do this one now and go on to major capital investments. You can begin to see within this the problems of specifics and how they're, they represent different people's philosophy or desires. Yeah. And that somehow as a council, we need to come together even though those decisions haven't been made by the full council. And, okay. You're sliding us up, Athena? Major capital. I would just say complete the elementary school building work at votes to that, that support the completion of the new of the elementary school building, of the new elementary school building. It's a one. And the two would simply Jones Library? Support, yeah, the Jones Library. To support the You're building to committee. Library committee, building committee. You, right. I, I started putting this in the first sentence and then you said it's I'm under one. It's Stay with the first the completion of the new elementary school building. Period. Well, um, yeah. let me call it. Support the renovation and expansion. of the Jones Library. Jennifer has a hand up. Jennifer, go ahead, I'm sorry. I would just think we'd say, what we're saying is we want the town manager to ex devote staff time to supporting the Jones Library Building Committee. I don't think we have to get into you know, how, what they're doing, we just want them to support the committee and what they're doing is the rent. I mean, just like with the waste hauler, we do want to get specific. We want to. Yeah, I mean, the, the I, I actually agree, right? Support the elementary school building committee, support the Jones Library building committee. Okay, all right. We'll know after Monday whether or not we're still there. Um, number three is interesting to me because <laughs> yeah, three and four are specific, but right and know. haven't been done. <laughs> I leave them. You know, I so leave that we them. can move forward. There's work been done on it. I'm not. Yeah, you know, Jennifer. But how do we write it? It was residual. I mean, I would almost leave three and four as it is because there's not building committees for them yet. And so we have to, 
for for the purposes of this and moving forward, I would leave three and four and five as it is, and then deal with this this what would be a number six regarding the brackets, if we want to suggest something, right? I want to say um, develop a multi-year plan for the re repair and replacement of roads and sidewalks. Uh, Jennifer's hand is up. Jennifer, I think you should just jump in. Because... Yeah, go ahead, because I keep reading <laughs> Jennifer and then I forget. Yeah, no, I'm look. getting back to the DWP. So I think we discussed this with Paul at the last GOL meeting. You know, I asked if we if it was too specific and he seemed to say it wasn't if we wanted the town to explore, you know, perhaps joining forces with a neighboring town like Hadley on a shared DPW facility. So would we want to add that or? I'd, although I believe it's the way it is. Um, I yeah. personally would leave it the way it is. Yeah, because so, for me, it feels embedded. If you're presenting a financing plan, some of it might be this joint joining with other communities. Um, and same with location. Lo exactly, yeah. So, uh, Athena? Tell me what to change. So, the and before seven needs deleted, but now we've put in eight different things. I These know. were all clauses that were in the bracket. Oh, I know, I know. You did it through clauses and. I would get rid of eight and put and before seven. Yeah. I'll save my comments about number six and seven for the council meeting, but yeah. It is 1128. We have one more policy and so, should we see if we can get through it? I have a question about number two. I know we have it for Crest, but Crest seems to be sort of halfway through being implemented and create, you know, sort of but full the implementation of the department. But DEI seems a little more settled, right? In my mind. And so it out. doesn't even belong in here anymore. Yeah. Any objection to that? No. Okay. I wonder when the town council is going to have a racial equity training. Um, four. The and needs to be deleted before three and added to before four. Then. So I would just say other options to the town council employees and members of the department and just take out that whole parentheses. Yeah. Employees are members of a department. No, members of the public. I, th I think Lynn I'd was say, saying. I'm, and members of the public. Yeah. yeah, which is already there after the thing, but yeah. So now we take all that out oh, all oh. the way to the colon. All the so way to the colon now, yeah. yeah and we, That's it. Wait a second. I, I really propose we present this to the council as an option. So if we agreed we're going to show four different things. One is what we worked on before and the red lines, and then this and the red lines. Yeah, and, and this would... We haven't done the management goals, but this one for presentation purposes would show what we might do with the management goals or some of them. Some of them are more extensive than others. 
Um, and I just have to say, given everything else that could be on the agenda, be prepared for this, not us not getting to this. That's um, understandable. Then if, if the council doesn't get to it, then it would be helpful to, um, to ask counselors to send feedback to GOL. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Are we done? I think so. Is there any questions or concerns that anybody wants to state? Jennifer? Yeah, I'm not, I, I don't think this matters in terms of the outcome of the vote. So I, I may just abstain just because I'm not totally comfortable with the climate action. There's and no I votes. Know it's just no to votes put it right out now. there. I mean, I don't want, want to vote no, but I think. There are no votes like, right now. Are we not going to vote no. to no. refer it to the council? No, not yet. Oh, okay. You just made my life a lot easier. Okay, thank you. It's for feedback on Monday, and then um, GOL will have another look on the 29th, and then present their final report recommendation on December 4. Jennifer, your hands up again. <laughs> I missed it often enough, so. <laughs> no, I, it's residual. Okay, are there any, is there any last comment or anything that anybody wants to make? Um, we have carryover on the agenda. That's the only thing I think we didn't talk about. Yeah, yeah and um, do people have five minutes or 10 minutes more? And um sure i <laughs> not much more than that but i really think we have to make a decision about bylaws i mean uh, about uh, about our um the, the rules the rules of procedure whether we're going to try to bring it forward or not the we committee have... voted the committee voted a first set we did you voted on the changes that i proposed and i i think there were a couple of other changes in there that's that's already been um, recommended to the council. Hmm. And then you're going to go and do more, but the committee made a recommendation on those changes. I when don't you, quite remember. I don't remember that one either. <laughs> it's been sitting, I, I keep moving it from council packet to council packet because it's, uh -huh. oh, let me see. So this this was specific to the changes you were ex, uh, recommended by GOL nine twenty seven twenty three. So and, these were the changes that I had proposed. Mm -hmm. GOL went through those, and then the the conversation was that you'd go back and look at the other changes. But those ones were voted by the committee, recommended by the committee. Okay. We should do okay. those. Yeah. Go ahead, Andy. I'm sorry. Go we, ahead. we should do those either the twentieth or the fourth of December at the council. And then I think what would be really helpful is, and, and it might be in today's packet, just to get them done so that whatever we pass forward to the new council, we can see something that has whatever is adopted, then, then what we've been talking about. Now, I know it's too much, Athena. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I think I think next meeting on the 29th, we have to spend some time with rules to figure out what we're going to pass forward on to the yes, next council, and what we're going to ask this council to vote on probably the 18th of December. Right. So, but I thought we had to read rules twice. No, it's oh, a two thirds vote now. now. Oh, okay. Thank you. So, okay. So we're not giving anything to the council right now on rules. We're waiting till we meet on the 20th. Ninth. Yes. That's our next meeting. Yeah. That's good. Okay. And Athena, I might want to set up a meeting with you to just go over stuff, make sure that does that make sense or is that just wasting yeah. your time? Okay. What else? Um, what else has to be carried over? Yeah, let's get there quickly. It looks like rental registration is ready. That's done. Uh, uh, street lights. The street light is a carryover. Yep. Um, the um, to the transportation charge, the ABRC Nuisance. charge. Nuisance bylaw is a carryover. Yeah. Hmm. Nuisance bylaw. Um, 
Waist uh, taller. Waist taller, thank you. Yeah, let me look what I have. Uh, the um the ZBA vacancy. Um I mean finance committee. I'm, I'm sorry. That's not is like real. That's it's not really here yet. And it's not a it's not a motion. It it would go yeah. into on automatic carryovers, it would go into other things that need done. Okay. Whatever that list is, right? Yeah. Uh, There's like a four point list. Mm. So we have streetlights, the ABRC charge, nuisance bylaw, waste tiler bylaw, non voting finance committee member vacancy. So um, that should be on any that, rules of procedure we don't get to get to. Uh, unfinished rules. Well, I and, thought at one point we thought about presenting the whole schmuggy and then giving it to the new council. Um, That's what I think we're gonna do. We're gonna yeah. try to vote on it, but if there's anything left over, we wanna mention where we didn't finish. Yeah, I think the goal was to get this council to vote on as much as it could that we were done with or agreed to, and then hand the rest off to the new council. Yep. But not hand them, but, but have a vote in this council for everything we've been working on as GOL. Uh, to, to the extent we're ready, it's ready. Right. And I think there's a bunch there that might be ready. We just were trying to figure out how far we could get before we voted a recommend adopt. Right. That would be the case. If I look like I'm packing up, it's because I am. Yeah. Pat, are you, Pat, are you going to ask that any members help write sections of the memo or uh, yes. are you going to draft a memo? Jennifer, go ahead, raise your hand, and then Mandy. Yeah, no, I mean, I just, I had offered to help, so Pat didn't With have to carry over you. If, can we do that? Or would we do, each do sections, so it's not violating open meeting law? Right, so if everyone yeah. works on sections before the next meeting on the 29th, um, then the committee can review them all together on the 29th. I would recommend looking at my draft for CRC yeah, I was going to do that set up that Evan used for TSO two years ago. I used for CRC two years ago and George used for GOL two years ago, or you can just find George's old one. It's, it's actually more basic. I was surprised when I went back to it. It's much more basic than you probably think it is. It really is just a list of things. Okay. In certain categories. Yeah. And, well, and, a and theme. sometimes a summary of the discussion, like TSO had, you know, here are the things that we wanted the next TSO to consider when you when you look at that. But most of them are they haven't come to GOL yet. So it should oh. be relatively easy, Pat. Yeah. And but, I think there is a carryover because it's gone to the town manager. There are bylaws from the that uh, are still being looked at uh, that were recommended for change. So that's just. That that would be in like section four. Mm -hmm. It's not a formal carryover, but it would be items to keep track of or whatever that section. Okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> the is. and then somebody might want to spend a little time with um, Anika and Anna for TSO. Yeah, I'm I'm working, working with them on that. Yeah, because we got two people there who've never done this. Yep, I know. So who? Um, are, is Jennifer, are you doing a first draft or are you doing sections? Let's just quickly figure um, out who's doing what. I mean, if you assign me sections or tell me. Pat, this is. I have to, I have to look at it and then. I yeah, can Pat, you just it. tell me what you want me to do. Yeah. And I'll, and we'll, when I ask you, I will make sure that Athena, you know, what section she's working on. And we can figure out a date to get them to, uh, so we can look at, so I can make a final draft for the 29th. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? Okay, I'm going to uh, adjourn the meeting of uh, GOL at 1140 a.m.
Thank you for staying the extra few minutes and particularly you, Jennifer, because you're oh, away. That's fine. No, thank you. You got a lot done. We did. Excellent. We did. Bye. Thanks. See you Bye -bye. later, kids.